So this topic has been discussed in the sneaker community for years and it looks like Nike is finally addressing a major problem. Plus, the old Kanye is back. Well, sort of. What's going on guys? It's JA. We're covering this past week's latest sneaker news and updates. Make sure you tap in on the thumbs up button. We're going to kick today's video off with the latest collab from New Balance. So Baltimore-based retailer YCMC is teaming up with New Balance once again for another version of their 990 V3. This time looking to take inspiration from the great outdoors. This sneaker sees dusty green suede spread across the uppers with a rugged finish while breathable black mesh sits beneath and allows for increased durability when in motion. In addition, the collaborative effort dons vibrant dashes of purple on the quilted tongues and plastic heel caps alongside speckled teal decorations on the back half of cushion and cap sole units. And a new colorway for the New Balance 550 has surfaced. So you have an off-white base sneaker and then they dress up the retro silhouette with an array of multicolored hues. So two new great upcoming releases from New Balance Personally, I've never been one to really get into the 550s, but I'm not even gonna lie to y'all, those 990 V3s are kind of calling my name and are looking very tempting right about now. Those joints are dropping February the 2nd for a retail of $200. So according to Z Sneakerheads, it looks like the Air Jordan 1 Satin Bread is gonna be making a comeback coming up this holiday, 2023. This sneaker originally released back in 2016 and the rumor has it, this pair was limited to just 501 pairs. So are y'all rocking with these joints or not? I feel like this release can go one of two ways. They could either be very limited, just like the 2016 pair and have crazy resale, or they could be mass produced like the patent breads a couple of years ago and be considered bricks. But with the reimagined black toe Jordan 1s rumored to be dropping this holiday season as well, I feel like these satin breads are most likely gonna be limited. So once again, a sneaker that we probably didn't ask for and Jordan could have just hit us with the OG. So Nike has taken to Instagram to officially tease its forthcoming Tiffany & Co. Nike Air Force One Low collaboration. But the internet is undefeated and the full details on this upcoming collab have already leaked. This sneaker features a black suede upper that is complemented by pebbled leather swooshes dressed in a Tiffany blue. Premium branding from the jewelry entity is present atop the heels as well. At the time of this recording, a spring 2023 launch is expected and these joints will be retailing for $400. So it looks like that black Air Force One energy will never be the same. So according to Drops by J, apparently Supreme will be releasing their own version of the Nike Air Bacon. A Nike basketball sneaker that originally made its debut back in 1997 and hasn't been retro since 2014. So all of my OGs should remember these joints right here. I believe Kevin Garnett used to rock these back in the day. So I almost forgot all about this sneaker. So I'm glad that Nike is bringing these back. I'm excited to see what the Supreme collab brings us. I just hope they don't mess up the colorways, but I feel like this is a cool way to kind of bring the old infused with the new. And can we talk about this Yeezy jacket? So Chase sees Ghost shared images via Instagram with a caption reading, Ye's personal Yeezy prototype hooded bomber jacket, AKA the Pixar of jackets. So what makes this jacket so good? Well, first of all, you got a ripstop biodegradable fabric. This jacket features exaggerated cuts, which gives it a more drop shoulder. And then you finish off the jacket with this super thick plush hood. And I believe Ye was wearing a black version of this during his recent run-in with the paparazzi. So this is the new Yeezy, y'all. Uh, and it looks like Ye's vision is for these jackets to drop in the future for a retail of just 20 bucks. And speaking of Ye, according to Ian Connor, they're gonna be bringing back Ye's very first clothing line, Pastel, which was originally supposed to launch back in 2009, but for unknown reasons, never released to the public. So Ye's daughter was spotted rocking the varsity jacket, which is a staple piece for the collection. Now, back in 2016, it was reported that Ye signed over all of his rights to the brand to Ian Connor. So it's currently unknown how involved Ye is in the relaunch of the pastel brand, but this is an incredible, amazing archive collection crafted and curated by some of the most talented people 
in the industry. So Nike has a major problem for years now. People have been bootlegging some of their most popular silhouettes from the Jordan 1 to the Air Force 1. Now, in the more recent years, we've seen Nike hit some of these creators with lawsuits. So more recently, we've seen them hit Warren Lotus. We've seen them hit Cool Kai. But people have always wondered, how come Nike never went for the big dogs? How come Nike never hit Bape with a lawsuit? Well, it looks like Nike is officially taking a stand against Bape, suing the Japanese fashion brand for allegedly copying some of its most iconic footwear designs. So Nike has filed a federal court lawsuit against a bathing ape for trademark infringement on the Nike Air Force One, Air Jordan One, and Nike Dunk. So according to the lawsuit, Bape began selling products in the United States in the mid 2000s. Nike said Bape's U.S. sales of the shoes were sporadic until 2021 when it drastically increased the volume and scope of its infringement. Bape's copying is and always has been unacceptable to Nike and because Bape's infringements have now recently grown to become a significant danger to Nike's rights, Nike must act now the lawsuit said. So for years and years now, people have given their thoughts and speculated on the reasons why Nike has never sued Bape, but apparently it all boiled down to the fact that Nike just never saw Bape as a threat until recently as Bape has upped their production numbers, it looks like Nike is now seeing them as a threat. So I wonder how much Nike is actually suing the company for and could it be an amount so big that if they do happen to win this lawsuit, that it could potentially put a company like Bape under. Only time will tell, but let me know what you guys think about the entire situation, as well as all of the topics covered in today's video. So we're gonna wrap things up here. Salute to each and every one of y'all for tuning in. I'm J.A. Make sure you guys stay safe, stay blessed, and I'm out, y'all. Salute.